These are the true believers in the forehead. This is my cause. And from that group, you recruit your KGB, your red guards, your brown shirts, etc. in the most extreme cases of authoritarian governments. Then the majority of the population actually realizes there's something not quite right about this, but they're silent and, you know, go along with it. And from that group are recruited the collaborators and basically the compliant sector of the population. A small minority break the conditioning. Some of them get sucked into violent actions. And so we just got a big old mess in the context of tyranny. But it's those who will stand for the right though the heavens fall with the gospel message, with the character of Christ. Hey guys, thanks for being here. And the question that this video is going to answer is, how can I make sure not to be taken captive during these polarizing times? So enjoy the video, click the like button, and please share. With the character of Christ, to even love the persecutor, that's an important point, isn't it? Should we bless those who persecute? Jesus said to do the same. Don't view the persecutor as an enemy, as an adversary. The Bible says our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is against Satan. View that person or that movement or though that group as casualties that we've lost. They're part of humanity. They're fellow humans. They're casualties whose minds have been lost in a psychological war. And they're not beyond, I mean, nobody's beyond being saved till, well, probation's hour remains. But view that as a casualty of our own, not as the, a new other. And now we've got a superiority, legalistic, pharisaical attitude in our own hearts. How do we deal during difficult times with keeping our minds pure and Christ-like? View those as victims, as casualties in the psychological war that is happening all around us. At the same time, speak the truth in love. Jesus was filled with both grace and truth, right? Can we do both? And can we say, have we learned some tough lessons as the people of God over the last few years? Have we come back and said, this is where things went wrong and we want to not do that again? We ought to. How maybe did we go wrong? Well, maybe not proper repentance and reconciliation from previous errors as discussed earlier, but also could it just be that we're conformed to the world? Conformed. We're talking about social control and conformity. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. This isn't as much a social crisis as it is an individual spiritual crisis. Are we doing what the Bible says? Come apart from the world, saith the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. Are we immersed in the world's media? Because I'm telling you, the scholarship on mass formation misses a huge element here. And it is the priming for a mass formation event. When you are raised in and you are bathed in worldliness, in the worldly media and the worldly schooling agenda, it will habituate you to not being a thinker, to not measuring it by the scripture standard. And then you will go with the crowd. You will latch onto the current thing much more likely. It's not just the the social context for the mass formation event. It's a social engineering agenda all along, every day, 24-7 for decades, through the media and the schooling. I'll give you a couple samples quotes from the media and the school seminars. By the way, email me. I'll just send you a link so you can watch the whole seminar. That's beltoftruthministries at gmail.com. 